Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today the title of our experiment is to find shear stress, shear strain, modulus of rigidity of a rubber pad using rubber and shear apparatus. A rubber and shear apparatus is simple just like extension spring and compression spring. We applied load and note the deflection and the dial gauge. From the deflection and applied load, we will find stress, shear stress, shear strain, modulus of rigidity and creep in phenomena. And finally, we will draw the graph between shear stress and shear strain and between creep and modulus of rigidity, creep and load. The objectives of the today experiments are to find the shear stress, shear strain, modulus of rigidity and creep of a rubber pad. To plot a graph between shear stress and shear strain. To plot graph between load and creep and to investigate phenomena of creep in a rubber pad. This is the rubber and shear apparatus. The rubber pad, there is rubber pad. Rubber pad is fixed between two aluminum plates. We implied, when we applied load, this load will be shear load. And due to the, this shear load, shear stress and shear strain will be produced in the rubber pad. Because two pads, one force is the uh, hanger and the second force uh, loads uh, and the second load is the uh, parallel and abogeneration is the fixed aluminium metal. This aluminium metal is fixed uh, with wooden channel. There will be, we, when we apply a load, an opposite load will be produced to the applied load. These Both of these loads are parallel and opposite direction. Due to this, these loads, shear stress and shear strain will be produced in the rubber pad. We will note the deflection and the dial gauge. This is the dial gauge. There are two pointers in the dial gauge. One is large dial and other is small dial. When, sm when large dial complete one rotation, the small dial will be deflected by one millimeter. From this deflection, and the applied load, we will note the, we will find the shear stress and shear strain phenomena. And from shear stress and shear strain, we will find modulus of rigidity. And from loading condition and unloading condition, we will find creep. And then we will find, finally we will draw the graphs between shear stress and shear strain and between creep and load. This is simple equipment, shear and rubber and shear apparatus. This is the background theory. Shear stress is when we apply two parallel forces in opposite, opposite directions, shear stress will be produced. Shear stress will be equal to force per unit area. Tau is equal to shear force, AP is equal to force parallel to cross sectional area and A is equal to cross-sectional area of a rubber pad. This is shear strain. This is the original rubber pad when we applied shear stress, uh, shear load. Due to shear load, shear stresses will be produced in the body. And this will be deformed. The deformation produced in the rubber pad for original length is called shear strain. And the, the ratio of Shear stress and shear strain is called modulus of rigidity, which I explained already in the previous classes. And finally, creep is the slow phenomena depend on three factors. One is initial strain produced in the body, second is temperature, and third is the time. Creep, we will find creep from unloading, from difference of unloading, unloading deflection and loading deflection. Then I explain procedures. Firstly, attach the load hanger with the rubber and shear apparatus. 
attach the hanger with the apparatus then put loads and increase gradually loads by 5 newton first we put 5 newton load and hanger and load deflection then we put 10 newton load and load uh, and load uh, and load deflection we gradually increase the load up to 20 or 30 newton then we will uh, then we then we will load deflection by unloading from the loading and unloading conditions we will find shear stress shear strain modulus of rigidity and creep now hang 5 newton weight with the help of load hanger and not loading the dial deflection reading and table 1 repeat step, step 3 power load up 10 newton 15 newton 20 newton 25 newton and up to 30 newton lastly remove the loads one by one to not unloading dial deflection readings it means that notes the uh, notes the reading of deflection by loading and then by and then notes the reading by unloading complete data and table 1 I will share a, a video of this with you and you will note the data from data video. This is the previous year data by zero newton load and loading condition deflection as a zero millimeter. By five newton load, the deflection is 0.14 millimeter. By 10 newton load, the deflection is 0.32 millimeter. By putting 15 newton load, the deflection is uh, deflection and loading condition is 0.49 millimeter. By putting 20 newton load, the deflection is 0.66 millimeter in loading condition. By putting 25 newton load, 0.8, the deflection is 0.84 millimeter. And by putting 30 newton load, the deflection is 1.01 millimeter. And then we start by unloading condition and unloading condition at 30 newton. Deflection is 1.01 1 .01 and 25 Newton deflection is 0 0.91 and 20 Newton zero deflection is 0 0.75 millimeter and 15 Newton deflection is 0 0.58 millimeter and 10 Newton deflection is 0 0.41 millimeter and 5 Newton deflection is 0 0.25 millimeter and in 0 Newton deflection as 0.09 millimeter from this data we can find shear stress shear strain modulus of rigidity and creep phenomenon shear stress is load per unit area load is zero our cross section rubber plate cross section area cross section of rubber plate 150 multiplied by 25 multiplied by 75 millimeter 150 is the length of the rubber plate 25 is the width of the rubber pad. Block width is 25 millimeter. Area is 150 multiplied by 25 millimeter. From the area and the load condition, we can find the shear stress. Shear stress is equal to load per unit area. This is zero, zero divided by area. Zero divided by area is equal to zero. 0.14 divided by area is equal to 0 0.0013. 0.32 divided by area is equal to 0.0027. 0 0.49 divided by area is equal to 0 0.0040. Similarly, 0 0.0053, 0 0.0067, 0 0.0080. Then we can find shear strain. Shear strain is equal to loading deflection divided by block width. Block width is equal to 25 millimeter. This is 0 .0 0 0.14 divided by 25. 0 0.14 divided by 25. 0 0.32 divided by 25 is equal to 0 0.0128. 0 0.49 divided by 25 is equal to 0 0.0196. 0 0.66 divided by 25 is equal to 0 0.264. 0 0.0264. Similarly, 0 0.0336 and 0 0.0404.
Similarly, we can find modulus of rigidity. Our shear modulus is equal to shear stress divided by shear strength. From, from shear stress and shear strength, we can find modulus of rigidity. Similarly, from loading and unloading condition, weep is equal to unloading minus loading. From unloading and loading condition, we can find creep phenomena. Unloading minus loading, 0 0.09 minus 0 is equal to 0 0.09 millimeter. Similarly, 0 0.25 minus 0 0.14 is equal to 0 0.11 millimeter. 0 0.41 minus 0 0.32 is equal to 0 0.09 millimeter. Similarly, 0 0.09, 0 0.09, 0 0.07, 0 .07, and this is 0 0.0. This is the average of shear modulus. Add all these values and divide by 6. These are 6 readings. Add all 6 values and divide by 6. We will get average Shear, shear modulus or modulus of rigidity. Finally, plot the graph between strain and stress. Shear stress, shear strain and shear stress. We will, uh, we will obtain a straight line between shear strain and shear stress. Similarly, plot the graph between creep and load phenomena and we will obtain a straight line. And finally, write conclusion from this graph. The stress strain graph is a straight line passing through origin. Thus, this indicated, thus indicated that the gradient modulus of rigidity has a constant value which is equal to 0 0.2082 Newton per square millimeter. Similarly, the load creep graph is also a linear graph indicated that with increasing load, the degree of a rubber increasing is fixed proportion. This is the simple experiment, just like extension spring apparatus and compression spring apparatus. I explained everything. If you have any question, please ask. So I will make a video. Of G. Creep is a slow phenomena. Creep is a slow phenomena. Time will depend on time. Unloading. We will find the creep phenomena from unloading and loading. When we when the load is zero newton and unloading condition, and unloading condition is is का मतलब ये है कि कुछ time बाद कुछ time बाद वही zero load है लेकिन इस पे हमारे साथ unloading condition में uh, uh, unloading condition में इसमें हमारे साथ deflection zero point zero nine millimeter मतलब कुछ वक्त बाद कुछ वक्त बाद इसमें deflection आ गया ये जो रबर है ये डिस्टर्ब हो गया पहले हमारे साथ 0 न्यूटन पे हमने 0 कंसीडर किया था लेकिन जब हमने लोडिंग कंडीशन कर दिया फिर अनलोडिंग कंडीशन कर दिया तो बहुत टाइम बाद इसमें थोड़ा बहुत क्रीप फेनोमेना पैदा हो गया ये वो स्ट्रेन है जो इसमें पैदा हो गया ठीक है इसको हम क्रीप कहते हैं स्लो फेनोमेना है और जितना टाइम गुजरता है बॉडी में डिस्टर्बेंस प्रोड्यूस होता है और उस डिस्टर्बेंस या फीलियर को हम क्रीप फेनोमेना कहते हैं जी बताएं अगर क्लियर ना हो सर और ये डिफॉर्मेशन परमानेंट डिफॉर्मेशन होती है क्रीप वाली जी क्रीप में जो पीरियड आता है वो दोबारा वो दोबारा रिगेन नहीं होता इसको हम एक नाविस की रिजिडिबल स्ट्रेसेस रिजिडिबल स्ट्रेसेस का मतलब ये है आप एक बॉडी को डिफॉर्म कर लें ठीक है और उसको दोबारा आपने ओरिजिनल पोजीशन पे लाए अगर आप उसको सही स्टडी कर ले तो वो एग्जैक्टली अपने ओरिजिनल पोजीशन पे नहीं पहुंचता तो हम कहते हैं इसमें रेजिडिबल स्ट्रेसेस प्रोड्यूस हुए हैं ठीक है थीके? तो ये डिफॉर्मेशन दोबारा आपने ओरिजिनल पोजीशन को नहीं आता तो क्रीप पिरामिया पीलियर है जब पीलियर प्रोड्यूस होता है तो दोबारा रिगेन नहीं होता और ऐसी मटेरियल है जिसमें रिगेन होता है लेकिन आम जब जो मटेरियल हम स्टडी करते हैं तो उसमें ये रिगेन नहीं होता बस कंडीशन में एक एलआई हमारे साथ है जिसको हम शेप मेमोरी एलआई कहते हैं तो शेप मेमोरी एलआई में हीटिंग के थ्रू हीटिंग के थ्रू ये रिगेन होता है लेकिन वो अलग चीज है आम कंडीशन में ये ओरिजिनल पोजीशन को नहीं पहुंचता मतलब शेप में मिलाए में तो जब प्लास्टिक डिफॉर्मेशन में जाए तो वो दोबारा रिगेन होता है आ, हीटिंग पे ठीक है वो उसकी प्रॉपर्टीज है लेकिन आम कंडीशन में ये रिगेन नहीं होता सर एनीलिंग वाला प्रोसेस जो 
सर एनीलिंग वाला प्रोसेस जो है उसमें फिर ये शेयर स्ट्रेसेस रिगेन हो जाते हैं जी एनीलिंग एनीलिंग ऐसा प्रोसेस हां जी एनीलिंग प्रोसेस से हम ही मैकेनिकल प्रॉपर्टीज इंप्रूव करते हैं जिस तरह हम कहते हैं ये इंजीनियरिंग मटेरियल है और ये हमारे साथ नॉन इंजीनियरिंग मटेरियल है तो दोनों में डिफरेंस ये है कि उस पे हम مختلف قسم کی ہیو ٹریٹمنٹ پروسیس اپلائی کر لیں تو اس کی بات اس کی میکینیکل پراپرٹیز امپروو ہوتی ہیں اور ہمارے ساتھ ہاں اس اس قسم کی میٹیریل کو پھر ہم انجینئرنگ میٹیریل کہتے ہیں تو انجینئرنگ ہم اس لیے نہیں کرتے اس انجینئرنگ ہم اس لیے کرتے ہیں کہ اس کی پراپرٹی امپروو ہو جائے مطلب اس یہ جلدی فیل نہ ہو جائے کہ یہ جلدی نہ آ جائے ٹھیک ہے تو आपको पता है इनीलिंग हम किस तरह करते हैं हम एक खास टेंपरेचर पे इसको हीट देते हैं और फिर हम स्लो कूलिंग इसकी एक हमारे साथ क्वेंचिंग है और एक हमारे साथ इनीलिंग है तो इनीलिंग में हम स्लो कूलिंग स्लो कूलिंग करते हैं एक खास टेंपरेचर के बस कंडीशन पे हम 900 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड तक हीट करते हैं बस कंडीशन में हम 700 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड जो मटेरियल हम हीट करते हैं उसकी हम मेल्टिंग पॉइंट को देखते हैं कि इसका मेल्टिंग पॉइंट कितना है तो उसकी मेल्टिंग पॉइंट से कम टेंपरेचर तक हम हीट करते हैं और पर फिर हम फर्नेस में स्लो कूलिंग करते हैं ठीक है ताकि इसकी प्रॉपर्टीज इंप्रूव हो जाए तो इनीलिंग हमारे साथ एक हीट ट्रीटमेंट प्रोसेस है جس میں ہم میکینیکل پراپرٹیز امپروو کرتے ہیں اس طرح ہمارے ساتھ نارملائزنگ ہے اس طرح ہمارے ساتھ پینچنگ ہے ٹھیک ہے اس طرح ہمارے ساتھ ایجنگ ہے ایجنگ ہمارے ساتھ ٹائم پہ ڈیپینڈ کرتا ہے زیادہ ٹائم کے لیے ہم ہیٹ کرتے ہیں اور انیلنگ میں ہم سلو ہیٹنگ اور کولنگ کرتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے تو فرق یہی ہے ایجنگ ٹائم پہ ڈیپینڈ کرتا ہے تو اگر آپ نے میٹرلرجی پڑی ہو تو آپ نے پڑے ہوں گے یا اگر نہیں پڑی ہو تو آپ ساتھ ساتھ میرے خیال میں فور سیمسٹر میں آپ کی میٹرلرجی ہے تو اس میں آپ پڑھیں گے جی بتائے क्लियर है कि नहीं यस क्लियर है किसी और स्टूडेंट का क्वेश्चन हो तो पूछ ले मैं इसका वीडियो बनाता